Hey folks, this is John Mayer. What? What happened to Jessica? <laughs> I'm here hey, too. Hi. Jessica. hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get started in about a minute. We always, uh, with these online things, we always wait till like one or uh, one minute past um, for those people that like get a get a calendar boop right at the right at the uh, minute, and then it takes like 30 seconds for them to uh, find the software and uh, load it. Jessica, is everybody unmuted? No, everyone is muted. Would you like me to un I find unmuting uh, everyone can be problematic. No, no, I, I know. I've, I've done it. I just was wondering. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch for hands um, and questions while you're talking, and then we can switch. There we go, it's 11.02. Hey everybody, my name is John Mayer and I'm the Executive Director of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. This is, um, this is I don't know what number this is, but this is part of our ongoing series of webinars about uh, the new, the brand new A to J author. Um, I asked Jessica for just a couple of seconds uh, before she gets started. Um, there's been a lot of conversation uh, on the discussion lists um, in the last week or so, um, um, covering the area of like reliability of uh, of A to J author, and so um, I asked uh, I asked Jessica to change up the the content of this session to be one where we're going to demonstrate uh, live on a tightrope without a without a net um, the conversion of of an A to J four uh, or maybe a couple of A to J four guided interviews into A to J five. Um, we believe that the software is actually pretty robust. So it's uh, it's it's not 100%, but it's but it's pretty close. Um, if there's time at the end of the of the of the walkthrough, we will we'll show you some of the outstanding issues that we're working on and uh, try to give you a sense of of uh, what what's still ahead of us. But but um, I wanted to I wanted to get an opportunity to uh, say to the community that you know the software is in pretty good shape. Um, and, and we've been doing a, a poor job of communicating that. So this is uh, one of our uh, first efforts to, uh, to, uh, to get that message out. And with that, I'll leave it up to you, Jessica. Okay, thank you. So welcome everyone. Um, just as a reminder, you are being recorded. Um, we will likely post this on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash A to J author. If you have questions at any time, you can raise your hand if you are call, um if you want to speak the question or you can type it into the question box and um, if you're calling in by phone you have to enter your audio pin for us to hear you. So as John mentioned the idea for today is to show you live um, how a conversion works, what it looks like, um, and in preparation for this what I did yesterday is I went to the developer portal on Law Help Interactive the live uh, production version not their rebuild QA server which is where community testing is currently uh, happening for A to J5 so I went to their live site I sorted by A to J only and I randomly picked two different A to J guided interviews to test um, I downloaded, downloaded the files. If you've ever done this before, it's this little download file button here on the right. Um, and then I uh, had the A to J file. So I have two. I have an order of protection from Oklahoma and a security deposit from Ohio. So just to make it um, easier for today, I saved both of those zipped files that I got from LHI to a folder on my computer. And now we're going to take it and put it into A to J. So I'm working in our uh, development site, which is for us, um, Batovi.A to J author. 
And the only reason is that we did not do a code push on Monday, which fixes one bug having to do with true-false. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I had the most update version to show you guys. Um, we are planning to push these, the changes that live in this Batovi site to author dev um, probably Monday, but we haven't confirmed the code push with our programmers yet. But um, so that's why it's Batovi a to j author instead of author dev if you've been doing community testing. Only reason is the one fix was not pushed on a Monday code push this week. All right. So how to go about converting an A to J4, you have the downloaded file, either you got it from Law Help Interactive or you have the file on your local machine um, because it's yours and you've been working on it. The way to do it is to go to this upload A to J guide interview button. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. So up here at the top of the screen, it says upload A to J guide interview. You click it. It brings up your computer's uh, local uh, search system for files. Um, and we'll start with the security deposit one. You highlight it, you click open like you do with any other one, uh, any other time you want to select a file. And then you need to refresh your browser page. Because I have a lot of guided interviews in here, I do control F a lot to search. Um, but you, it's timestamp, so you could search by today's date, you could search by the name. I happen to know this file is called security deposit, so we'll scroll down. Um, let me move my controls out of the way for GoToMeeting. Uh, okay, so security deposit, you can see that I uploaded a couple of them yesterday and today to test them to ensure that these were um, solid examples for you guys to see and to, for me to create a map of how to show you how to convert it. Here is today's, it's timestamp the latest, it also has the latest number, so I know that this is the one I just uploaded. You double click on it to open the guided interview. And here is um, all of the questions or pages that are in the guided interview. The first thing that I usually do when I'm converting these, and I've done a bunch of conversions uh, to test our software, is to go to the About tab. So the About tab gives you general information about the guided interview. Um, I like to go to the revision history and create a note that this was revised and converted on 2-02-2017. Jessica? Uh, yep. So can I point out that just by uploading it and opening it there, um, a conversion has happened, right? Yep, it's done. And you can see that it's done um, by going... Once, when it saves, let me force a save. Well, if you if you published it here, if you downloaded the A to J, it would contain a file called guide.xml and guide.json. The JSON is what's used by our new viewer to um, run in the uh, the mobile responsive viewer on LHI. Right. My point's a technical point that when you when you choose to upload. Uh, uh, an A to J4 guided interview, the system knows that you're doing that and then uh, initiates a, a pretty complicated conversion process at that point. Now, it's not a, it doesn't complete the conversion, There's that, and you're going to go through some of the things you got to do to make sure everything works, but, but a lot just happened in that, uh, that uh, one-click button there. Right, in the two seconds before it loaded um, when, I, when I refreshed it. Um, yeah, so it makes all the basically all the changes. It converts all of your logic, for example, in like A to J four to those um, condition and result things into the logic boxes, which I'll show you. Um, which is the, uh, an, sorry. And another thing to note is that you know if you noticed, I uploaded a zipped file. Um, in past versions of A to J, you were only um, able if you were sharing an A to J between colleagues, you were only able to share the .a to j file, and you had to reattach all of the external XML lists, like the U.S. states, county list, um, all of the thing, images, all that kind of stuff. This new version of a to j lets you upload the entire package, all zipped, and it puts it back into the proper places of where it should go. So if you have a list of counties attached to your live A to J4 interview on LHI, you download it from them, you upload it here, and it's all in the right place where it's supposed to be, and you don't have to do any reattaching like you used to have to. So first step was to go to the About and just note that I've, that I've upgraded it so that the next time someone goes through this, it has that revision history. But the most important part to check when you're converting is this All Logic tab. So this Steve is, Simon has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. 
let me unmute you. Um, oh, this is, okay, so this, this is Steve's interview that I'm showing, and he's just warning that it's um, in development still, so it's not 100% debugged in general. Um, thank you, Steve, for letting us know. Um, and we will uh, take that under advisement. I just grabbed two random ones yesterday off of LHI in the morning. So we appreciate you sharing this with the community so that we can use it here as a demo. Okay, um, so the logic here, as you can see, it's showing you all active code. So this is every question with the name of the question here that contains logic. Um, so if we scroll through the box, if there is a problem with the logic, the box will be red and A to J will give you an indicator that there, uh, of what the issue is. So if we just keep scrolling here, we hit our first box that's red on 23 complaints start. When I was testing this yesterday, I discovered one of our bugs that we thought was fixed was not 100% fixed in that um, we created the ability to use the word null to clear out a variable, but apparently it's only working on uh, text variables or on true-false variables, it's not working on text. So this options is a variable that's a text variable and null is not working. So that's on our issue queue for our developers to work through. Um, so that box is red and there's nothing we can do about it, there's nothing that, that you could do about it right now before we push the fix that's coming. So a workaround where you could just put like uh, empty quotes or something like that instead of a uh, null? Um, well, if you put empty quotes, it would be passing a string to hot docs that would have a space in it. Um, so I guess if your hot docs could digest that or it didn't matter if there was just a space where the variable is, sometimes it matters if a variable is passed with a value at all. Right. The absence of a value or a, or a, or a empty string are not the same thing. Right. right. And this fix, when they fixed uh, it for true-false, was a very easy fix. They just um, missed text variables as uh, one of the things they had to make sure allowed no. Um, so as you can see, we keep scrolling. This is fairly complex logic. It's testing if the county is something and setting each variable, setting a new variable to something else. It allows for complex logic here with or statements. Um, we keep scrolling. Has a lot of logic. So here is another example where it's red and it gives me an unidentified variable, unidentified uh, or unexpected identifier. And what's happening is that uh, in the logic and drafted in four, uh, it, the quotes are not complete. There's a start quote, but there's not an end quote. So I would assume um, that this was meant to say set Muni CT to Van Wert County um, because that's the pattern here. But if it's wrong, the Steve can fix it on the live on the real interview. But if you see, I click out of it and it goes away. So the error was just that there was an open quote, but the nothing was there to tell L, L, um, to tell A to J what to put there to, um, as a string. So, so this is interesting, right? Because A to J four was a nice guy and would let you get away with a with a bug essentially, and it would still run. But A to J five is a, a little bit stricter. Because um, part, partly because it's it's uh, we're we're finding these problems and having to deal with them, and partly because the SDK, the hot docs SDK that we're dealing with, is also uh, stricter in in how uh, variables are uh, formed and uh, and things like that. Yeah. So one of the perks I think of A to J five slash six, this new version, is that you can see these logic errors much easier. So in four, you would have had to click through get to this individual question, scroll through all the different options. So each one of these would have been its own condition listed separately um, without being fully listed unless you clicked on it. And the amount of testing and effort that you would have had to do to find this error is much greater than if you, um, if you can see it all here in one place and quickly change it. Um, as I mentioned, I've converted a lot of these, so not this is not in any means to call out this particular guide interview as having a bug or an error in the logic. Um, every single one that I've converted has something like this, that these are long, complex interviews. You guys are working with limited time and people and testing um, doesn't hit every single possibility as hard as you try. So I've converted ones from small programs up to large programs, and each one of them has something that is not 
a hundred percent perfect and so part of this is painful but at least it's getting a um, a better product out to the end user so anyway if we keep scrolling that's the end of the logic and those were the only two issues with conversion the next part of testing and ensuring that you have a four to five conversion that's gone smoothly is to go to the pages tab and start running through the guided interview so if we started here um, you open up a question you hit preview and you can start going through your interview as it was meant for the end user um, the preview is watermarked um, but it is something that's possible for you to, to um, run through exactly how your end user would see it similar to how we had in four we have the variables and script box that you hit what I did is I hit this variable slash script button and it popped up the trace logic the script what's happening and the variables which will populate as I go through the interview we can start walking through this but I did it yesterday um, and I came to one question um, that we can look at that I can show you um, it was called 19 options and I hit the point in which I couldn't get any further in the guided interview and so what um, what I did is that I went into the question itself and looked at it and I noticed that check boxes were being used um, and with check boxes you it's always required at least one of the options um, or excuse me that's with radio buttons but with check boxes um, it's used with true false variables so here is letter TF it's a true false variable but the default value is set to letter, not true or false. Um, and in the logic that's used, it's tested whether letter TF is true. So what, what's happening is the user selects letter TF in the question. And so the value um, is being held as letter, um, but then it's being tested later to be true or not. So it, the, the logic wasn't working properly. So all I did. So it's a type typo in a variable name. Um, it's that you're trying to set a true false variable to a word and then testing whether or not it's true or false. So you're setting it to letter, but trying to test if it's true. Ah, okay. So to fix it, all I did was change it to true, or you could just delete it completely. And with a true false variable, if if selected, it's true. If false. If unselected, it's false, and so then this logic works fine. Um, I ran through the entire interview. I was able to generate a answer file at the end. I didn't have time yesterday to actually test it against the hot docs. I didn't download the hot docs answer file, um, but this is the kind of thing that you have to do to convert your guided interview from a four to a five, and this one is converted. Um, if you were on author dev, you could publish it to rebuild QA to run it against your hot docs. Um, they did a lot of, um, when they, when LHI created the Rebuild QA server, they moved a lot of the existing guided interviews and hot docs templates to the Rebuild server. I'm not sure of the exact date, so if you've made changes, this, you might have to re-upload your hot docs template to Rebuild QA, but a lot of the existing ones are on Rebuild QA, and you can just uh, link to whatever the template number is there. The process is fairly simple. You click rebuilds QA, the button from A to J, it sends it, you can't change any of this, this is based on what you have in your about section, you hit publish, I'm already logged in so I think it's going to let me go, oh no. That's the about section in the A to J guide interview, not the about, not the description of a, of a template on LHI, right? Right, that first box, it becomes editable once you're logged in, but that first point, it's not edit editable, it's based entirely on what you have in the About section. Gotcha. So here, I want to create a new template, I create new. Now you can edit, change the name, um, it, it automat LHI automatically knows that this is an A to J five because it contains that JSON file. That's the trigger that tells A to J or that tells LHI if an A to J is a four or a five. And then just like you do when you upload a uh, four now, um, you associate it with a hot docs template, you say what status it is, language, state, contributor group, all that. I'm not gonna do it for this one, but um, you fill out all those, the index codes and all these checkboxes just like you do on the normal LHI website with a four. 
you hit create and it'll give you, it'll take you to that page that gives you the URL um, that you can start testing. And then it also will show up in the contributor portal. So that's pretty much the entire process for converting, testing, and uploading it to LHI for testing on their server with Hotdocs. Um, in the whole process, you probably want to run through in preview with the um, testing it several ways, going down the different branches. The same way you do quality control with an A to J4, you can download your answer file from the preview tab. Here I can, um, with the variable script window open, I can save my answer file and test it against the local version of my Hotdocs template. Um, same way you can do with for now, when you test assemble before you upload both of them to LHI. Other Brett than that, Harrison has his hand up. Sure. Um, Brett Harrison. I see it. I'm looking at the question. Sorry. Uh, the question. I, I can't see the questions. I'm just a panelist. Oh. Um, I, I'll change you in a second, sorry. So the question no is for true-false variables, why not make the default value option a drop-down that only allows for true, false, or blank rather than open text field? That's a great idea. Uh, yeah, and you mentioned it's just a feature request. Um, yeah, at this point, that it, that would be the best way to deal with it so that somebody couldn't put um, a letter or file, whatever, put the wrong variable, the wrong type of answer in the default. Um, we're working with defaults um, in a couple different places with button, buttons, that's one of our existing bugs, where it's saving it as a string rather than true-false, so defaults are in the works, but yeah. It's, I agree, great idea. Yeah, thank you. I will note that down and add it to our, our uh, issue queue, but not the critical list. Um, okay. So before I move on, I can show another example if you'd like with the order or the protective order that I have from Oklahoma, or we can talk about the conversion process. It's kind of up um, to you guys. There aren't any other questions that were typed typed in. Um, we can take suggestions too if you have them, Brett. I can unmute you if you'd like to be unmuted. Just let me know. I'd say go ahead, do another conversion, but um, but even faster. Okay, so let's see. The other one I have is the uh, order of protection. So same thing. I clicked upload. It uploaded it. I just have oops, excuse me. I just have to refresh my browser, and I can do a search for today. Uh, let me close the GoTo meeting. It'll show me all the ones I've touched today. But so, so that's that's not so. The fact that you had to refresh your browser is actually um, a problem. Um, it, in in browser land, um, you know, it's it's almost like about a, a larger percentage of problems we have sometimes talking with people about bugs is uh, is is uh, clearing their cache or something like that. Now, when you have a piece of software that's running locally on your on your on your uh, local machine, um, you can entirely control the environment. When you're in a browser, it, you're you're at the mercy of people's uh, browser settings, whether they're in incognito mode, whether they're um, clearing, whether whether their uh, cookies are set on or off, things like that. Um, and they and and because of security reasons, you know, browsers need to be secure. Um, it, we, we can't 100% control the, the environment people are in. And so sometimes the only way to fix a problem is to clear the cache because the browser is remembering what, what it looked like you know, a, a second ago. Um, there are workarounds for that, but they're, they're, my, my consultants tell me they're, you, know, um, you, you never approach 100%. You, know, you get the 90, 95%. Um, because it would seem to me that if you did an up, upload there, you know, it should just refresh that screen, you know, sort of like Gmail does. When you get a new email, it should just refresh the screen. Um, so all this is just to say that we're aware of those small, uh, you know, I, I call them annoyances or inconsistencies, but they're, they're expected because of the environment or the ecology that we're in, which is running inside of a browser. Go ahead. Thanks. So on um, a to jauthor.org, we have the page for community testing, which has tips and tricks. One of them is how to do a hard refresh and clear your cache. 
um, if you're working in Chrome like I am, a simple reload doesn't necessarily clear your cache. So you have to open the console, which when you, the issue with clearing the cache mostly arises when you're bouncing from one interview to another. So if you were in the same day, in the same browser viewing session, bouncing between multiple guided interviews like I'm about to do now, it's probably a good idea to clear your cache in between because sometimes A to J doesn't recognize variables in the new guided interview that you're working on, the second one, because it has the cache that's remembering the variables from the first one. So the way to do it in Chrome, and this is documented in uh, the community testing page, the tips and tricks section, which I can show you in a minute, but the way to do it in Chrome is to open the console, you hit F12, when the console is open, you get additional options when you right click on the circle arrow, the refresh button, to empty cache and reload, which I can do now. Depending on how much cash you have, um, it can take some time. Sometimes when I'm working a lot of testing, it takes like two mi a minute to clear the cash, which is a long time in internet time. So to be clear, this is this does this should uh, this should not affect most people in most situations. This is when you're doing when, heavy when, when testing. You're heavy testing. You're moving between multiple uh, guided interviews, which most people aren't. Right? They're working on one guided interview and everything's fine. Um, but it's, it's one of those sort of edge behaviors that we wanted to point out because uh, we are asking people to do uh, uh, testing right now. And so if you find yourself wondering why something doesn't seem to be working, then you know, a, a, a hard reset or a, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a cash clear is often, is, is, is you know, 80% of the time, um, the solution to those problems. Thanks. So we have here the petition for order of protection from Oklahoma. I know this is the one I just uploaded because I know that 823 is the latest number on my list here, but it is time stamped. Um, so here again are the questions. Um, first thing I would do would go to the about and say that I changed, that I revised it, I uh, converted it from four to five. We can check the logic. Um, if we scroll down, the first one we hit is uh, undefined variable mail. So what I think the author is trying to do is if the defendant gender is male, because they've asked the question, what's your gender, in order to populate the avatar, then they want to set the defendant his slash her name to the word his, so that when they use this variable, it can say what is his address, what is, or if they're female, it can say what is her address, that kind of thing. The problem is, that when um, dealing with this, A to J is thinking that male is a variable because it doesn't have quotes around it. And um, A to J is saying if there is no variable called male in your variables tab. So the way to fix this to get the result that the author is looking for is to put quotes around male so that A to J knows it's not a variable but instead is looking for the actual word male to put, uh, to test against. It's not testing one variable against another variable, it's testing one variable and if it contains the value called male. So you can see that when I put quotes around it, if I click out of the box, this is no longer has the little caution warning symbol next to it. So same thing, I just have to do it for all the words that are not variables here. This one's kind of long, so sorry, but. And then I have to click out of the box for the ones above it to actually take, but so I'll just finish these before I click back out of the box. I just had the thought that every time you upload an interview, we should automatically insert a line in the about box that this was converted on a particular date. We can, mm -hmm. we can sort of like default put text into, the, uh, into that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the issue queue. That's my, <laughs> okay. my, my brain. <laughs> so seeing that I clicked out of this, all of the uh, error messages went away and the box went back to just the black border. Keep scrolling through it. And there are no other logic problems in this guided interview. Even though so you for those of you for those of you who worked with A to J four, you never saw these if if then else or if and if uh, statements because they were um, what's the word? They were hidden from you by by an interface that was like a pull down, right? Where you could choose a, choose a an if, then no. choose a condition, and choose a, a you know a set statement or something like that. So we've converted them into this 
text code and gotten rid of that interface because because when you're doing lots of if uh, if statements, it's a lot easier, frankly, for you to type them than it is for you to have, you know, add another if statement, choose these three pull downs, add another if statement, you know, it gets tedious. And as you saw in the previous one where there was like, um, I don't know, 15 or 20 different counties, you know, it could take an hour to do that. Whereas if you can type it fast, you know, even type it in uh, something else like Notepad and then, you know, cut and paste it into here, you know, uh, hopefully the, the, the flow is a lot faster um, in A to J5. Careful with cut and pasting, though. You want to make sure you're doing it in something like Notepad and not Word. Yes, yes. That goes for the question text as well. If you have, like, somebody wrote a script for you and they wrote it in Word, uh, copy it into Notepad first or some other just plain text editor and then copy it into A to J because Word throws all kinds of crazy formatting it in it and we've had problems where people were copying and pasting from Word um, and sometimes depending on the browser it can A to J can just be like I don't know what's going on here and delete everything that's in in it so if you had like a long logic statement you wouldn't want there's no point to copying and pasting it if it doesn't stick right so Word is famous for the opening quotes being different than the closing quotes. So in, in, a, in programming languages, they're the same. In Word, though, they're formatted differently because they're, you know, they look like they're pointing in on both sides. So they're actually two different characters. And so they break programming logic if you paste without um, turning them into text. Mm -hmm. Another benefit to having open logic boxes like this is you can do two, two levels down. You can nest if statements. So for example, if user gender equals female and underneath it, if user um, selected pink is our favorite color, you can go to a question that says, cool, you're a female and you like pink. Um, so you can have two if statements, nest, one nested within another, which is a new neat feature for those who are super programmery. Um, so we've tested the logic, we see it works. The next step would be to run through the pages tab. Um, so the other issue on this interview that I saw on the logic tab is that there is a lot of turning navigation on, turning it off, turning it back on. If you saw the uh, listserv last week with the known differences, one of the known differences right now in A to J is that you cannot turn off the navigation bar it's on for every interview. So this doesn't break when they set navigation true false or navigation TF to false, it just doesn't turn off the navigation like it used to in four. Um, another thing I noticed. So this is, this is, this is to me that, that, that particular, this, we're getting really deep into the weeds I believe, but that particular issue is still in, in my mind and uh, open, for, open for discussion. It's just that we've run into so many examples where uh, turning off navigation caused uh, other problems deeper into the testing of, of a guided interview. And so looking at the, at the overall ecology, you know, we're, 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 we took the decision at this time to say, all right, no turning off navigation right now. We're going to have to figure out, you know, what, what long-term uh, the, the right thing to do is for, for authors and for users because one because if you turn off navigation you, you, you strap the user in um, in certain situations and if you and if you let uh, but, but with navigation uh, on all the time you, you do run into the rare but possible problem of user backing up you know backing up a decision tree and then going down another path and there being data that was previously chosen that that sort of is uh, like orphaned, you might say, um, and and might make uh, might 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 be a problem in a later if then else or or branch, either in A to J author itself or if then the uh, associated hot docs file has some branching based on a uh, variable information. Um, all I'm saying is it's 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 not as simple as oh, what's the problem? Let people do whatever they want. Or, oh, we should control what people do so they don't get hurt. It's like each one has its problems in, uh, in design. And um, we're trying to figure out if there's, a, if there's a, an optimum solution here. And we would like to hear from you guys about some of this. So part of what we do with our issue queue and our outside developers, Batovi, if uh, that's who we use, if you've never heard them about 
about them um, is that we set priorities for them and we set priorities based on what we think is going to impact the largest amount of the community or be the biggest pain in the butt for the most amount of people using it and we want to get those bugs knocked off first. Um, and one of the things that we were hoping would raise with community testing that we've been doing with LHI is that you run through your guided interviews and you guys have, there's more than 1,100 of them out there. So we don't necessarily know how each person did it and how much of a pain in the butt it could be to a whole collection. So that's what we want to hear from you when you're testing these. If, um, if something is used a lot by you, let us know and it might change um, how our priorities are in terms of um, getting these bugs or these things fixed or these features added sooner rather than later. So we want to hear from you. Don't have to test, you don't have to test a guided interview from beginning to end for it to be useful. You can just do a, you know, grab anyone, convert, um, test uh, until you run into something that, uh, if you run into something that, that you think is a problem, you know, drop us a note and quit. Um, uh, we're, 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 we're trying to be as fast as possible on the turnarounds. Um, usually we can we can at least get back to you on whether or not that's that's a that's a bug or that's the expected behavior or there's a workaround or something like that. Mm -hmm. There was um, a question from Steve saying that he turns off navigation in all his repeats because it can cause serious problems with logic and repeat level if the user goes back. Um, I'd like to talk to you more about this, Steve, if we can, because we have a fix in the works for nested repeat loops and fixing the way ordinals and logic handle when a user does use the back navigation that our um, Batovi guys are working on that I'd like to see if it applies to your situation. So if you don't mind, I'll be reaching out to you um, about that because that's what we want to hear. We only have um, a small handful of people that are testing, and so those are the only ones that we're hearing from. So we want to hear from uh, a larger uh, chunk of the community. Um, okay, so this same one, one of the things I noticed um, that is changing between A to J, 4 and 5, is the description and the question about um, learn more as in pop-ups. So in 4, when it was a pop-up, it was red and underlined, um, and when it was a hyperlink like a website, it was blue and underlined. They're both blue and underlined now, both pop-ups and hyperlinks. Um, so some of the language here, like click on the words that are red and underlined, will need to be changed to say click on the words that are blue and underlined um, in order to make it a like make sense to your end user. So some of that is going to need to be changed. Um, there's a question later on that says, um, if you want to go back, hit the back button. In four, this button was literally said back and next. Now it's just an arrow, forward and back. So some of that language is going to have to be changed. Um, there were, I can skip it, but when I went through this interview, there were a couple where there was like duplicate logic. They had two statements that did the exact same thing, deleted that. Um, one of them was a circular where it branched. Um, I couldn't get, I, I couldn't move on in the interview if I, uh, selected a certain path, it was a question like, does the defendant wear glasses? If I selected no, I couldn't move on to another question. So it took a little digging to figure out that um, if you select no, it's the author had set the destination to be that exact question again. So you could never get out of that question because it, if you selected no, it kept looping back to the question in which it asked you, do they wear glasses, yes or no. So there are some, some uh, cleanup that can be done um, when you're testing uh, as well. But this is not unusual in any of the guided interviews that I've seen. No aspersions to any of the authors out there, but this is hard to test um, for every possible variation when these interviews are huge. So we totally understand. Um, same thing, if you were on this, you could upload it to LHI. I don't think I need to go through it again. But um, no. yeah, so... Um, the known differences in A to J, we covered them in the listserv, but the known differences are the navigation bar issue, which is not a definitive, it's just a not right now kind of thing. Um, you ha if you want to add up variables, like if your variable is, uh, if you want 2 plus 1 to equal 3, you have to have variable types that match. You cannot add a multiple choice and a number and get 3. You're going to get 21 in that example. Um, so variable types have to match each other when you want to use adding and subtraction. Um, and the whole phone number, social security, 
um, issue in Ada J4, we added formatting to both how it looked to the end user for a phone number, for example, into three boxes. Um, and we also changed the answer to include parentheses and the dash between the, third, the three and the four sets of numbers. Um, we're not adding that anymore. It is um, just a string text that comes out. There is a webinar on February 28th that LHI is putting on their monthly technical webinar. It's at 1 o'clock central on the 28th where um, I've worked with the capstone people to come up with um, ways in which to, to figure out how these known differences may affect your hot docs templates. And Bart Earl has come up with a script that will, fix, that will parse it exactly how you need it um, coming out of A to J exactly the way we do it now. No matter how it comes out of A to J, because the problem here is not that we can't figure out formatting. The problem is there's a thousand guided interviews that um, each author has come up with their own way of doing it. Um, right. And, and so we're we, needed a, we, we needed a perfect solution or, or at least a, a comprehensive fix. <clears throat> yep. Um, and the way we're, what we're doing to help um, that fix ensure that it works. Um, so what it is is based on numbers or anything coming out of A to J and it parses it into numbers and then puts the formatting that's needed in the hot docs template into it, be it uh, breaking it up into three chunks, putting the parentheses around it, whatever. BART has a whole script for it. Um, and we're adding in similar to um, a date field where the date gives you this, this, where A to J gives the end user the suggestion of month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. You know, the little grade. Um, let me see if there's a date in here to show you. All right, let me close this. Might be easier to add one. Oh, there's a birthday one right here. Ah. Okay. So here, A to J gives this gray suggestion of month, month, day, day, year, year, year for the end user to type in so they kind of know what to put here. The same idea for social security and phone number, we're gonna add the same grade gray feature to suggest what the end user should type. And we're doing that in order to make it more likely that the end user will put it into a format that is predictable and that's what Hot Docs needs. It needs a predictable output um, to base it on. So we are adding that. Um, other things to cover here, so we have the known differences, we talked about those. We have so our let me say, let me say that if you're, if you're doing, uh, you know, we expect that the majority of conversions will be as straightforward as the, as the two uh, Jessica just demonstrated. Um, but if they're not, or if you run into any problems or questions, we'll help. You know, you're, 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 if you spend more than you know, 15 minutes or, or, you know, 25 minutes scratching your head going, I, I can't figure out what's wrong, stop that and, um, and drop us a note. And chances are we, we've run, we, we may have run across it or we have recently fixed it or something like that or we know a workaround, you know, that will get you over um, all the small humps for, um, for conversions. So you're never going to be left, you know, uh, out, out in the cold um, with this conversion. You know, worst case, we'll, we'll do it. You know, we'll do it with you. We don't want to offer to do it for you for everybody because um, you're, you're talking to the, the majority of the A to J team. No, you're talking to all of it. A lot of times if I, go, if I do get emails, I, I either do just fix it for you or I send you a GIF that shows you how I fix it and my files so that you can see it. So it's a little video that will play and show you how I made the changes or where the changes need to be made. I'm fairly quick with turnaround, but... Don't everyone email me at the same time. Um, we right, within reason. Right. Within reason. Right. So we had a question uh, from Danielle that some of uh, their A to J4 interviews use nested repeat loops, and their developer has said that they do not yet work in A to J6, and asking whether this issue is high on the priority fix list. So yes, it's actually a fix that is pending uh, code review that our developers have already fixed. Um, but that leads me into talking about our issue queue and our timeline. So um, last week, you, if you saw the listserv, you saw that there was um, comments about it and timelines. And um, John and I talked a lot about it and what we could do um, to be clearer with you and also to get um, this fixed as soon as possible. 
So what we did is we went um, back to our Batovi developers, brought another person on staff, hired an additional developer to fix what we call our critical bug fix. So what I am showing you now, um, and hopefully John's cool with this, <laughs> um, is our... Oh. <laughs> it's like showing our dirty underwear. Right. So we'll, we'll make it smaller so they can't read right. it. No, just, just kidding. Um, so what this is is we work as a team with our Batovi developers in GitHub. Um, it's commonly used across the development um, platforms. It's really good with creating issue queues and having um, private and public discussions and adding of issues. It's where our viewer lives, so for those of you that are hosting independently of LHI, you can get access to the A to J viewer as soon as it's pushed uh, to LHI, it's pushed up onto our public viewer so that you can access that as well. Um, but this is our critical bug fi fix list. We have 22 that are open. Um, this is not all of the problems that are in A to J, but this is all of the things that we think are essential core components of what it means to have a guided interview work properly. And this is what our developers have given us a timeline um, for to fix in about a month. They think they can fix everything in about a month, including IE. So I know that's been an issue. <laughs> That's been an issue in the community that we weren't sure how IE would work because it handles logic and syntax very differently than every other browser. But IE is heavily used in courts and libraries with um, less up-to-date. Old computers. Yes, I was trying to think of a nice way to phrase it. Um, not nah, it's old <laughs> computer. So let, let me also say, so these aren't, for those of you who are not programmers, these aren't bugs like, you know, the stupid programmer, you know, typed something wrong or... Or, or made a mistake. A lot. Of, these are these are what are called logic level programming bugs. So in other words, the the software runs. It just doesn't do exactly what we want to do. And in in in, in programming, you have to tell it exactly what you want. Well, to tell it exactly what you want, you have to know that. And and what and and what this and and if we were writing this software for the first time, well, then it's easy. We just we just tell it what we want, and that's that's what it is. But we're actually constrained by, well, what did A to J4 used to do? Because we want to do what A to J4 did. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, and, and, and we have to make this work with the thousand guided interviews that are out there. So it's, a, it's, a, it, it, it's w w so there are more unexpected behaviors popping up um, and, cr and creating uh, critical, critical bugs like this than there would be as if this was a from scratch project. Um, uh, I, I guess that's my defend the programmer speech, and I'll get off my soapbox. And a lot of them that we're seeing that are on, well, one of them, for example, that's on this critical list, is that um, step signs look a little wonky. They look a little different than they did in four. And so, like, children, here you can see on the screen, is properly centered. But when you get, like, long, like, your information is a little close to the edge here. Relief requested is a little close to the edge. There's a little um, overlap. That kind of thing is we're trying to make it look like you expect it to look as well. Um, and we have to account for somebody typing in very long names for step signs where some a lot of people use short ones or numbers. Like there's a lot of things that authors did that we're trying to figure out and account for um, as well to make sure that it looks the way you expect it to. So, right. and, th and these things are these are the type of things that look a little bit different in different browsers mm -hmm. and even worse in different versions of browsers and so if we get them to the point where they work like they do now but they're not perfect um, you know we're gonna we're gonna put them on the issue queue as we got to come back and visit this but we're not going to make it a critical fix because you know it, it's it's uh, good enough for government work mm -hmm. you know um, Nobody's prevented from running the guided interview. You can still read the information. It'd be nice if it were, if it were perfectly polished, every pixel in the right place. But we'll get back to that uh, when we have some more time. Right. And we're prioritizing functionality over aesthetics, like the nested repeat loops. We've been pr um, So nested repeat loops in A to J were never natively supported. It was a hack that um, or a workaround that was developed by a developer in the community in which to enable uh, hot docs with nested repeat loops to have an A to J front end. And so we've had to deal with um, adapting to a developer hack that is now widely used in the community, kind of adopting that and figuring out 
eventually, yes, we want to support natively A to J nested repeat loops. So we don't want to script something that adopts the hack but prevents us in the future from having a clean native um, uh, nested repeat loops. So part of that's balancing and trying to figure out, and our developers and the code are trying to figure out, they do something here, does that mean later it's going to take longer to add a feature that we want to add? Um, but nested repeat loops are going to be supported the same way that they were uh, in 4. A similar, it will work like it did in 4. Um, okay. So are there other questions? I don't have anything else um, like prepared to show you guys. Um, those were just two guided interviews pulled randomly off that I ran through yesterday um, to figure out where the problems were so I didn't have to do that live with you and to show you how it works. Community testing is still open. Um, it's going to stay on A to J on Rebuild QA and Author Dev for the near future, I think February this month. Um, but we're hoping to get, once we get through these 22 critical issues, to move it to our production site and then on to uh, LHI's production site as well. But I welcome you all to raise your hands if you'd like or uh, to be unmuted or to put your questions in the question box. Um, otherwise, please do attend that February 28th LHI call. Claudia or Miranda send out um, notices on the listserv if you're, not, if you're not familiar with it, but that call will talk about any changes you need to make to your hot docs template to adapt to A to J's new known changes. John, you have anything last minute or else to say? Um, no, I think I've pretty much said everything. Does the does the fill feature work? Yes, I don't. This got it interview doesn't have anything in it um, because it's converted. Um, I can show that. So what John is talking about is this button here, fill, that will help you with testing. Um, right, so right. in the, in the question itself, you are able to put a sample value in that can be used um, in testing. So the social security number one. Uh, let's put one, two, three. So every field that's in, that's in a guided interview has a, has a sample value uh, box in A to J author. And so that, go ahead. Okay. So that when you run it, right. I hit fill and it put it in. I didn't have to type it in. I only so the, so the number. Right. So the theory here is that if you go through an interview the first time and fill in the sample values, then you know if it's one of those interviews where you find yourself testing it like two or three, even if you only test it three times, that's like three times you have to like come up with a fake name and a fake address, and it drives you crazy. I know because that's it drives me crazy. So if, if you do it once, then you can just click the fill button and it will take the value that you stuck into that sample value box and just stick it in. It's like a shortcut to, uh, you know, uh, sort of the equivalent of like in browsers when you say, you know, remember your password or remember my data so that you don't have to type your address in again. But built into A to J author for your specific um, uh, variables. Another thing for testing is with this variables and script window open, I mentioned you could save answer files. You can also reload answer files. So if you've tested it and you want to send it on to the next person to test to make sure they like how it looks or whatever and they don't want to have to run through and type everything again, or if you start an interview and then you just want to save your answer file, you stop halfway through with testing, you can come back. You can reload answer files to use as well that um, will save you time and you just click through it. and. Um, it, it's the same as for when you loaded an answer file. Where's the reload button? What What do you mean, the reload button? So you How would, would I reload an answer file? Oh, so open. You would open it, and then, let's see, at my desktop I have, and you would search for, like, .anx test. So it'll search then for all the ans like answer files that you've saved. So you would run through it, test it, save the answer file, and then come back and search for wherever you saved it from and reload it. Just like if the end user um, was reloading answer files in LHI. Cool. And, and I assume, actually this is an interesting question, what if you loaded answer file from a different interview? If the variables match, it would populate. There you go. So, so you could even use a different answer file, and it, right? And if the variables are exactly the same, so if you used, if you're consistent in all your guided interviews in your variable naming, like you always name last name as 
client underscore last name or you know L L N or whatever it is, and they're the same across all your interviews, then your answer files are going to be, you know, ninety percent or eighty percent or whatever uh, the same, at least in terms of the variable names go, and that. Um, you know the, the the perfect world is all the, is that there's a there's a, a taxonomy of variable names that are the same across all the guide interviews, um, but that's that's a pipe dream right now. It's just a feature request. <laughs> that's right. Everything's a feature request. All right, so we're almost to the hour. I don't see any um, other questions. But thank you all for coming today and for participating in community testing and being involved in A to J Gotta Interviews. We love to hear you, uh, hear from you. My email is just jessica at cali.org. Like we said, I can help you with um, problems you're having or if you have a, you're stuck at a point you can't get on, let us know. If you don't like something, if you do like something, we uh, like to hear from you as well. Jay Mayer at Kelly.org. I think John at Kelly.org will work as well. Um, but what she said. <laughs> all right. So thank you all. Our next new user webinar will be the first week of March. Thank you. Bye-bye.